Okay, so this lesson I'm going to be showing you how to set up Lemur in Ableton. Now Lemur is a very cool tool to turn your iPhone into a MIDI controller so you can actually control a program such as Ableton uh, wirelessly. So the best way to do this is to download a few programs. The first you'll, the first you'll have to download is called Loop MIDI. You can get this from Tobias Erickson's website which is in the link below. And then also if you go to the Lemur website, you'll find this program here, Lemur Daemon, and then also this program here called the Lemur Editor. The next thing you're going to do is set up a wireless connection. So you're going to click on this menu here, then go to Open Network and Sharing, and then in this menu you're going to click on Set Up a New Wireless Connection, scroll down to the Ad Hoc Network Connection, which is basically just like a wireless connection except that the actual internet connection isn't going through that. It's a Wi-Fi connection dedicated for just the Lemur app. So we're going to call this Lemur uh, Test 1. You can choose to do a, a security type or not, so we're just going to leave it open. Uh, but if you're obviously doing this in a stage or in a public performance, then you might want to think about having a security network, of course, and a, a password. Okay, then on the iPhone, we are going to the settings menu, click on Wi-Fi, then we're going to look for the Wi-Fi network that we just created. So we're going to click on Lemur Test 1. Then what we're going to do next is go back to our Loop MIDI program and create two MIDI ports. So in here you can change the name of the port if you want. So we're just going to call this one Loop MIDI Port Out. And a Loop MIDI Port uh, Normal one. Then we are going to the daemon tool and click on add in this bottom corner daemon midi in and do the midi port that we just created then we need to wait for the computer to pick up the wireless signal from the iphone so we are going to go to the lemur app so let me just turn the screen for you Then we'll go to the Lemur app, and as you can see in the Lemur daemon tool, uh, the iPhone is now connected. So we're going to set this to Lemur 1, and then also we need to set a outgoing connection. So the loop mini port that we just created for out, and Lemur 1 again, 0 again, sorry. Okay, so now the iPhone is connected to the computer. So next what we're going to do is open up Ableton. Make sure that you don't open Ableton before doing this because Ableton won't recognize the wireless signal. Another way of seeing that the computer has identified the iPhone is you can see under here that the wireless signal now has this uh, triangle with an exclamation mark in it. Now usually this means that there's no connection but in this case it means that there is a connection so that's all good. Then in Ableton we are going to go to the preferences so that's control comma Click on MIDI Sync, and you can see here that there's a few more MIDI ports that, as before. So we want to make sure that the input and the output for the loop MIDI port and out are turned on. And then we're going to just turn these on for those as well. Oh. So now for the track Sync and Remote, loop MIDI port and loop MIDI port out for both the input and the output are turned on. Uh, now this might be a bit too much, but either way, this, this is how you make sure that it works. So once this is connected, you can then go to the Lemur Editor, and this is where it's really nice. In the Lemur Editor, you can create your own interface for the iPhone app Lemur. So when you do this, you can either download the Lemur for the iPhone or for the iPad, or for the legacy phone as well. So right now we're going to choose the iPhone menu. And then in this palette here, you can just literally drag one of these things into the screen. And you can see, oh, we forgot something. We want to make sure that the Lemur editor is connected to the phone. So we click on this button here, and then we double click on our phone. And as you can see on the phone, the connection is now, whatever's happening on the screen is now also happening on the iPhone. So we can also revert this connection so we have it um, synchronized. So now when I play with this fader on the phone, you can see it happening on the computer as well. So this is a nice little feature to work with. 
So we're just going to work with, uh, we'll just put three things on here for now. A fader, a knob, and then as you can see it's really easy to just paste these things in there and you can change the size. And then we are also going to do a multiball. The nice thing about a multiball is that it has a physics system integrated into the app. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to this menu, click on behavior, and then with physics, I'm going to turn on the mass spring. And then and then as I go onto the iPhone, you can see that when I pull the ball somewhere, the friction is turned lower, so it actually it keeps moving for a second. So this is a really nice feature of Lemur that, that no other uh, MIDI controller has. So this mass spring effect can also be used for knobs like this. So we're going to turn this to mass spring. And then as you can see here, it doesn't instantly go to my position, but it sort of is attracted to my position. And then as the, the friction, as I let go, the friction that I set down here, which is right now at 0.9, will eventually slow it down. So if I turn this friction down to zero, for example, then you can see that it'll keep going. So this may be useful for some crazy effects, but for now we're just going to set this friction to 0.7, and then you can see that it works almost instantly, which is very nice to, to play around with. So for the multiball as well, it has a few more options down here. So the attraction is uh, the speed at which it moves towards your finger position. So if we turn this attraction down to 0 0.1, for example, you can see that well, the attraction is not that strong. So if the friction, the friction is nice to sometimes put in 0 here, but then as long as we have the speed, not at 1, but at 0 0.1. 3 for example, so the speed, uh, friction and attraction are all on a scale from 0 to 1 so you can play around with those things, so right now oh, let's turn the attraction back up to 1 and then you can see that you can play around with this and then it'll never keep going, it'll never stop so the nice thing about this is that this can now be used as a X and Y axis controller for Ableton MIDI, uh, for Ableton Live so we're going to go to Ableton and as you've seen that we set up in the preferences menu that these things are connected. Now on an audio track, we are going to set up an audio effect which has both an X and Y axis uh, value. And then we can play around with that. So at this time, we're going to choose an auto filter effect because I know that this has both an X and Y axis at the same time. So we have this effect here. Hold on, let me just zoom into this. So we're going to press Control, comma, look and feel, and then we can scroll this up or down to zoom in or out. So we're just going to put this in 16 so it's easier to see. And then, as you can see, I'm, I'm just moving this on with my mouse. You can see that there's both a Y axis and an X axis going on. So that's good to remember. So we are going to go to MIDI mapping, which is Control M. So we're going to click on MIDI over here the blue colors show that it's now set to MIDI maps and remember that this one is set to the x-axis so we want to set this up for the x-axis of the multiball as well but the trick to do this is to set the friction to 1 so it doesn't move anywhere where we don't want it to and then we're going to drag it into this corner so now we can actually control just the x-axis and just the y-axis so that, that will be very useful so we are going to click on the effect that was changing for the x-axis and then move the multiball over the x-axis and you can see that it's now picking up the x-axis value so we are going to click on the y-axis and move this so it's picking up on the y-axis value exit out of MIDI mode actually we'll just connect these things at the same time so this is uh, for the volume so we'll set that up for this one and then also for the panning We'll set it up for this. We'll exit out of MIDI map. And now, you'll see, usually it has to take a while for it to pick up. But now you can see, as I'm moving this around, it is also connecting the auto filter. One final touch. You can also change the colors of the mini mapping so we are going to click on this and then click on properties this is in the lemur editor and then here on color you can choose 
the color. This is very nice for in a classroom because if you have access to several iPhones or several iPads for the music classroom, then you can actually set them up in different color schemes and then teach different musical labels or musical concepts such as sounds going higher or lower, volume going up or down, or playing around with the frequency effect. So these, this is a great way f uh, to visually show what's going on in Ableton in music. My name is Sander de Vries. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me anything. And good luck with using Lemur and Ableton.